It's early morning, downtown Toronto, the biggest and richest city in the country. People go about their business. But there's a crisis here that most people don't really want to see. There are more homeless people in Toronto than ever before. And the thing is, do we even notice them anymore? Do we care? There's so many different types of homeless people in this city. People that fall in hard times, get divorced, lose their jobs, get a work injury. It's not just the, the bums you see on the street. We're everywhere now. And it's a sad situation. Not everyone looks like they're homeless. The vast majority don't look like they're homeless. I mean, that's Paul's story. He's 43, and you'd never know he's been homeless for six years, ever since he hurt his back and lost his job. You have no hopes and dreams left anymore. You have nothing. Because people think you're nothing, you end up thinking you're nothing, and you just eventually end up fading, fading away slowly. We have to make sure there are places for people to shelter so they do not die on the streets. The reality is, people are dying. Eight homeless people have died in Toronto in the past two months, and winter is just getting started. We have an emergency going on in the city, and we need to see a response that is equivalent to that emergency. And that's why activists are here in front of City Hall demanding the city declare a state of emergency. But I know how hard I have to work just to survive. Kevin Derns has been living in a shelter for six years. He says most people don't really care about the homeless. It boils down to real humanity. We know what to do, we're just not doing it. We got to start caring about people. Stop going like this. So yeah. tell me, how do people treat you? Um, they don't see me. They, 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 they see that stigma. You know, I, I'm violent, I'm strange, I'm different. I'm just simple and I need someone to help me. I need people to help me. Well, I want to be a part of the society, community. Kevin wants the city to create more shelter beds. The fact is, if you make minimum wage or collect social assistance, it's almost impossible to afford an apartment in Toronto nowadays. And so shelters are full. For most of us, shelters are a hidden world. Cameras aren't usually allowed in. Remember Paul? He lives here, in the St. Simon's shelter, where he slept on and off for six years. Did you ever think you'd end up sleeping in a shelter? Uh, I had a work injury and I also suffer from depression and um, there's no available housing and there's not enough money to live off. You have no choice but to come to this place. So paint a picture of that for me, like no available housing. I mean, I'm on an 11 year waiting list for housing for a white male, 43 years old. I mean, think about that. 11 years, is that really a waiting list? And that's Still, Paul considers himself one of the lucky ones because at least he has a bed. And what, what's life like for you now, living here? It's a full-time job. What is? Living in a homeless shelter. You, you're, you get no sleep. Um, you're kicked out all day long for eight hours a day. You're not allowed back in the shelter. You have no private time at all. You shower with a bunch of other guys. You're using the bathroom with a bunch of other guys. It's a full-time job and it's very stressful. I'm stuck. I dug myself a hole basically and I can't get out of it now. Shelters were supposed to be temporary solutions, but now people live in them for years and years. I'm Scott, I'm homeless, been homeless since October 15, 2016. Scott used to run a small downtown hotel. The day that closed, he lost both his job and his place to live. Did you ever think you'd be in a place like this? No, no, I was always, I always had money, I always had a job. I was getting to the point where getting too old to get a job and my my physical features are not like they used to be. Who wants to hire somebody with no teeth to go serve tables? None of my friends know that I stay in a shelter. So I try to keep it that way. How come you don't tell people that you're living in a shelter? I don't want the pity. My daughter would tell me to go up there and stay. And no, I don't want to put a burden on her. So. I mean, what do you wish for? Get my own place, get back to work full time, and just get back up there where I used to be. Where I get up in the morning, I got a place to go. I get a paycheck every week. It's not like that anymore. Three years now. So, it gets hard. 
Scott's story shows just how precarious people's lives are today. And while he tells me that he worries that his situation could get worse, he tries to stay positive. Just got to bounce back. Get back at it. If you don't, you're going to go downhill. You're going to be out on the street sleeping in a tent. So I don't want that because I wouldn't survive out there. Sleeping outside is reality for thousands of people across the country. They're everywhere, in tent cities and parks, under bridges. I meet Frenchie just a few hundred meters from some of the most expensive homes in the country. What is this place? Uh, it's our home. Yeah. What kind of life is it? Uh, it's a difficult life, but uh, we survive. Every day we survive. Will you show me where you live? Yeah, sure. Frenchy, and that's what he wants me to call him, shows me his tent. And I live in that, that one. He lost his restaurant job and has been living here for six months. How do people treat you? Uh, here, pretty good. Uh, outside, a uh, different way. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean outside? Like? Uh, by on, up the bridge, yeah, right. on the ground. How do people treat you there? They, they, they judge us very quickly and they don't know us, so yeah. If you come down here and have a look and see how the people here live, it makes you wonder how long they can survive. But winter's coming, you worry about that? Uh, not really, no. Okay, we have a good setup. Uh, we have a, a lot of tarp and we, we can make a small fire in your tent and uh, that keeps you uh, warm, like, like a knee glue. Yeah. I mean, what scares you living here? Uh, the rats. I, 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 oh, the, the, like the rats, okay, is big like a cat. And they're here at night? Yeah, yeah. Every night? Every night. Yeah, every night. And what do you do? Uh, I'm hiding in my tent. You know, I have to remind myself, this is Canada, downtown Toronto. Why are you talking to us? Uh, I just want to say to people, we're not, like, uh, that bad. We have a different life, uh, but... We, we we still human. Uh, we're, we're not alien, you know. We, we we are people. And someone's brother or sister or son or daughter. In Canada, we like to say we live in a just society. Is that true? And we're a rich country. There's no reason for this to be happening at all. There's not. I'm sorry, but I can understand in, in third world countries where they don't have the resources and money, but in a city like Toronto, in a country like Canada. So what do you dream about? I just want my own place, just peace and quiet. I just, I'd like to go back to society, man. I'd like to be a contributing member of society again. I really would. When we talk about the homeless, it's often in terms of numbers and statistics, and really those are easy to ignore. But after meeting Paul, it's hard to look away. Nick Purden, CBC News, Toronto.